That being said, Mark Goddard, he says, let's do this. I'm ready for it. This is your main event of the evening. This is a 63 kilo catch weight bout, and here we go. It is Jonathan Brooken in the black shorts and in the black tights. It is Tom Ninimaki. Such a strange stance from Brookins, isn't it? No, it isn't. Yeah, you know, you just talked to me that you think maybe he might just be too relaxed. But I think that's just his style. It's yeah. just kind of what he does. I mean, you talk about a guy that's doing yoga every day and getting his zen right. I think he's just a real flexible, chill guy. And it's taken him to victories before, so he definitely has the credentials. Ninimaki, though, quickly putting the pressure on Brookins and pushing him up against the fence. Yeah, the question really is, where is this fight going to take place? Is this going to be a grappling match? Is it going to be a slugfest on the feet? You know, at first glance, uh, Tom Ninimaki looking to clinch up with the cage and possibly look for a takedown, which is interesting. Not going to be easy to do against a guy like Brookins. Both have very, very good takedown defense and great ground skills. And I think the real question of this fight is how bad do these guys really yeah, want to be absolutely. in mixed martial arts anymore? And a big right hand rocks Brookins. Right down the middle, beautiful shot by Tom Ninimaki, but how bad do these guys want to continue competing? Do they really want it? And I think that's a really good question for both of these competitors. And, and the, question, the question that we can't answer. You know, we have no. no idea, we can only kind of guess. Uh, and they're taking it fight by fight. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and um, Jonathan Brooklyn just hands are low down. It just makes, it makes you worried, you know. There's, Tom's going to be swinging, and if he sees an opening there, he's going to, you know, if he connects, that could be all over like that. He's got the Just power like, to Oh, people. he certainly does have the power. Oh, Brookins eats one. Brookins better be careful yeah. there. He's eating that left hook. Brookins with these real unorthodox shots. Nice combination by the former Ultimate Fighter winner. It almost looks like a combination, you know, it's a bit strange. Almost a combination of the Conor McGregor stance with the Nate Diaz style and Nick Diaz style of striking. <laughs> this you know, is true. It, 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 what it, a fun combination. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I'm sure neither of the fighters involved would be happy with the combination, but... You talk about two guys that have trained under some really big gyms. Uh, you know, Brookins with TriStar, with GSP, Rory McDonald, and the whole crew up there in Canada. And then Tom Ninimaki making the trip down to the Black Zillions and all the great talent they have down there in Florida. So. Both fighters are training with top talent and top guys, so they have that experience. Yeah, they've been exposed to the very best that the mixed martial art world has to offer at the highest level, so they know what's going on. What a on treat for sure. here for the fans here at Euro FC, watching around the world on Flow Combat and right here in the Metro Arena in Espo, Finland. Absolutely. And uh, Jonathan Brookins looking to take the fight to the floor. Ooh, beautiful body shot, followed up by an uppercut to the chin. And now Brookins is starting to get some rhythm, and here comes Ninibaki. I just have this feeling that uh, Ninimaki's getting the better of the strikes and Jonathan Brookin knows it. Um, but it's not holding him back. He still looks completely relaxed, but I think you, we might expect to see him shoot for a couple more takedowns. A guy like Jonathan Brookin wants to take it into deep rounds. He's very good once he goes into deep rounds. His cardio has always been very, very impressive. Tom Ninimaki. This is another guy that can go to decision, that can grind out victories as well. Has a great base, a well-rounded fighter, and even though he had a short stint in the UFC, this is just one of the best fighters that's come out of the Scandinavian region. Yeah, Tom Ninimaki is going to be trained harder for this fight than he has for any other fight. To headline a massive event like this in front of his home crowd, you know, he's, he's, take, he's taking this oh, seriously. Oh, nice no uppercut. Big left hand, and here comes Brookins. Throw him with a little bit more power there as well. Getting a little stronger as the round goes on. Under a minute left here in round number one. As these two strategize the game of human chess between Ninimaki and Owen, he lands another big shot. Starting to string him together is Jonathan Brookins, but quickly gets answered. Ninimaki is showing the hardest shots by the looks of it. And Nice body shots from Brookins. These big looping punches from Brookins are just hitting the arms, forearms, and elbows of Tom Ninimaki. They're not really getting in, whereas because of that low uh, stance, those hands are down. When Ninimaki hits Brookins, it's, it's landing on his chin. You know, it's landing on his head. Final moments here of round number one of this three-round affair at a 63 
KG. Catch away. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful right-handed jab. And you talk about that Diaz style. He just continues to put hands on it. Yeah, not a whole lot of power. Awkward, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow style, yeah. just kind of moving around. And, and it just makes it such an entertaining fight. It's, it's so difficult to get, when you're training for an opponent so unorthodox as Jonathan Brookings is, it's really hard to bring people in to mimic that style so that uh, you're used to fighting it. You, you almost got to get a fighter, get one of your teammates to like smash a bunch of shots of vodka <laughs> and just let him kind of wander into the game. Absolutely, yeah. We don't actually advise and you know they, that, though. Well, they do drink a lot here. <laughs> yeah. At least that's what I've heard. They have a reputation, right? Here we go, pushing forward. The interesting thing about this fight, it's not hit the deck yet, you know? And now Tom Ninimaki looking for the takedown here. He's got the power, he puts it on the floor. Is this a place that he wants to be with the very submission savvy Jonathan Brookings? I'm not sure. Is he trying to make, you know? Ninimaki just wrenching down on that neck and trying to bring the fight to the floor, feeling very confident against another accomplished grappler in Jonathan Brookings. And hey, you're gonna have a hard time finding better flexibility than Brookings right now. Yeah, you've got to wonder why uh, Tom Ninimaki is trying, you know, looking so aggressively for these takedowns. I think he really wants to secure the round, to be honest with you. The first round was very close. He's, he's not going to be certain whether he took that round or not, so I think he's possibly looking to get a takedown to secure the second round uh, in the event that it goes to a decision because he... Oh, know, and he wrenches in that guillotine. This is the, this is the but problem. But now in side control. This is the problem, is that he's taking it to the floor with a very experienced grappler and a very submission-hungry grappler in Jonathan Brookings. Luckily, now, as he is at home, though, in side control, feeling very confident. He escaped that guillotine, but great defense by Ninimaki. Yeah, he used the cage really effectively, and he jumped to the side. You need to jump specifically to the opposite side on which the opponent is grabbing the head with. So if he's grabbing with the right hand, you need to get round to the opposite side, or the submission will come on I worse. feel like he Ninimaki that. really needs to work on his ground and pound and, and hit those little strikes in there, because I think a guy like Brookins is so flexible. It's going to be hard to do a whole lot with him on the ground. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I think that if he is taking it to the ground to get a bit of a uh, advantage on the scorecards, he's going to want to look to do something with that ground position. And I'm not sure how many transitions or submission attempts he's going to get from here. So now Mark Goddard is watching very closely. Not a whole lot of happening from this position, looking for Ninimaki to possibly transition. And He's kind of locked up right now with Brookins. Yeah, I wouldn't look to stand anyone up from there, though, because it is a transition. Well, they're going to do it themselves. Yeah, there you go. And now Brookins is Brookins going to try and take Ninimaki down and then kind of almost uh, equal out the scorecards if, if, if that's what they're going by. Takedowns if everything else is equal well, and he, equal it out. Well, he knows how to play the game if anybody does. And he realizes that he's probably down after that. And, and it looks like he may be able to drag him down. He can't quite turn the corner and put him on his back. And now he does. Ninimaki Nini immediately making his way to the fence. He's looking to use the cage to scramble back to his feet, which is exactly what he wants to do. The main event of Euro FC, and there he goes quickly taking the back, attempting to take the back. Yeah, so this is, is Jonathan very, Brookings, this is and now very, dragging it back down. Very dangerous position here. I wouldn't be surprised if Jonathan Brookings jumps straight to the back position here as we go. But perfect work from Tom Beautiful. Beautiful. Spinning around and using it to reverse the position and take him down. How about that? Nicely done by Tom Ninimaki. Now with the underhook, Brookings is going to give up position, and Tom Ninimaki He's has a chance to make something happen here. He's in the open guard of Jonathan Brookings, though. He needs to be careful. Luckily, he's got him nice and tight against the fence when you can't move your hips so much. You can't set up submissions and sweeps as easily as if you're in the middle of the cage and there's nothing there. That leg's come through now. Jonathan Brookings is going to try and get underneath Tom Ninimaki and look to set up uh, a hill hook by, or, uh, or some sort of twist and footlock by throwing that leg in over the top. That's why he would do that position there. Luckily, uh, Tom Minimaki has neutralized that position, got to half guard there, and he's going to look and try and pass from here. But watch Tom for the Minimaki feeding off the crowd right now, Daniel. Yeah, watch for the right leg of, uh, of Jonathan Brookings. If, if he can loop that around the leg, the thing is the knee through position here uh, kind of protects the leg, but if he can get his leg underneath that. 
Wilkins grabbing a hold of the head here and trying to get into a better position with that leg yeah. in. It gives him a few yeah. options. This is a, not a great position for Tom Ninimaki. His hips are high, but his head's low. He could be susceptible to an umaplata, a triangle, or an armbar from here. This is not a great guard position. Luckily, there's only 15 seconds left in the round as Jonathan Brookins tries to set up a umaplata. You see how that leg's through again? And right back up, and now he's going to grab a hold of the head. Big shot, and here comes Brookins. Not much time left in this one, but Brookins comes up firing. Wow. Let's let it play out inside of that Euro FC cage. Mark Goddard gets us started. Third and final round between these two elite competitors. Ooh, ducking out of the way of a big shot there was Jonathan Brookins, and now Brookins grabs that leg. But great defense already by Ninimaki. Where does he go from here? Ninimaki's going to try and drive that leg back to the floor. You know, whilst he's on one leg, it's very easy. If uh, Brookins can get underneath him, he can lift him up or, to, you know, just sit down and drag him down to the floor. Um, the fact that he hasn't done it yet means that there's, you know, Tom's defense is good. Um, looking to possibly set up a guillotine off of that. And now Brookins drives him into the side of the cage and great technique by Tom Ninimaki yeah, he's to doing, stay on his feet. He's doing the right thing here to defend the takedown. And that's exactly what I think he should do this round. I think he should try and stay uh, at distance and strike because I think that's where he's a little bit more successful. I still feel that that second round was the put an impression in the judge's mind and I think that he did it. So I think that he's better off staying at distance and striking a little bit. Um, but he was successful on the ground in the last round. But it could, there were points there where Jonathan Brookins was close to an opportunity and Tom Ninimaki takes him to the ground. But you notice Brookins quickly gets that leg in there to make things a little bit more difficult giving that half butterfly and now quickly into side control goes Tom Ninimaki. This is what we were talking about earlier. He, he keeps that guillotine, he pass rounds to the side. When you pass round to that side of side control, you can't finish the guillotine from there. So a lot of people hold on to that guillotine from side control and their arms just get tired and they don't finish. But uh, well, Here Brookins comes those right bows. And letting go. Dropping bows on Brookins is Tom Ninimaki. Well, this is what we were talking about last round. You said it perfectly, which is, Jonathan Brookins is a slippery, <laughs> he's a slippery guy, and you're probably not going to be able to transition or submit him too easily. So what better way to give a good impression to the judges than to drop some decent ground and pound? And half guard is the perfect position to do that. Watch out for the right leg of uh, Jonathan Brookins. He can throw that leg over and look to attack the legs of Tom Ninimaki if he wanted to. Well, I'll tell you what, as long as you're staying in that position, in that half guard, Tom Ninimaki is dropping some short, nasty little elbows on Jonathan Brookins, one after another. And I'll tell you, take it some damage on the tough American fighter. We are halfway through the round, and Jonathan Brookins is not in a good spot against Ninimaki. Yeah, I'm surprised Jonathan Brookins isn't using that uh, underhook with the leg to try and set up a, a leg lock on Tom. Um, if, if nothing else, he probably won't get it, it's very slippery, but it will create space and Tom will have to defend, which means that he can possibly get up and get to a better position because he's not in a good spot right now. Ninimaki, defense. great defense on that, on that butterfly guard, just exactly. get it into side control, exactly. not allow Brookins to work. And now, really impressed with Tom's transitions on the ground. He knows exactly what he should be defending yeah. and he's doing it correctly. Oh, he's countering everything that Brookins is trying to do to escape. And now here comes the big left hand by Tom Ninimaki trying to finish this fight and put a bow on the victory. Now the crowd gets into it and they're clapping hands, rooting on Stoneface. Mark Goddard warning Brookins to move. Tough spot, not a whole lot of time left for Brookins. This fight for me, I think, lacks a little bit of enthusiasm and passion from Jonathan Brookings. He just doesn't seem to be aggressive on the submissions as we've seen in the past. Just been smothered, though. Just yeah, been smothered yeah. by Nini Maki. And but, but to he, the credit, I mean, he's smothered him and really countered everything that Brookings has tried to do. Yeah, he really has, but Brookings just doesn't seem to be attacking. He has small opportunities every once in a while, and he's just not putting 100% effort into the, uh, you know, obviously he's pacing himself a little bit, but I just think that he could look a bit more aggressively from some positions to try And now he's starting to show a little bit of life. Now Brookings back 
to his feet, but it could be too little too late. I, th I think it might be. You know, this round is obviously uh, Nini Maki's, and there's 40 seconds left. Jonathan has to do something. You have to be careful. I was just about to say, from this position, you can jump up straight into a triangle. And he jumps into that triangle, and he's trying to wrench down on it, but it's not very tight. If he can grab onto his shin and pull it down, then this could be... You know, Tom knows exactly what's going on now. He knows exactly. He has 15 seconds left. All he needs to do is make sure he stays postured up because if he, his head goes down, that triangle is going to come on and it could come on before the 15 seconds left in the round. But I don't think luckily it's going to happen. He keeps posturing up and he's out of there. Well, what a desperation move and, a, and, a, and an opportunity for Brookett. And he almost gets pounded out. Is Nidhi Maki going to finish? And that'll be the end of it. Wow. What a fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after three hard fought rounds, we go to the scorecards. We have a unanimous decision. All of our three judges had it 30 to 27. In favor of our winner, Tom Stoneface Mimi Mackey.